The Ethereum merge is a very important upgrade to Ethereum that is anticipated by a lot of people in the crypto space. You probably heard about it a lot in the last few days. In this video, we will explain everything you need to know about the Ethereum merge, very simply. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what is the Ethereum merge and how Ethereum will work after it, the impact of the merge on the normal users, the impact on Ethereum tokenomics and price, the impact on gas fees, and the impact on miners. And finally, some risks of the merge, so let's dive in. So, what is the Ethereum merge? The Ethereum merge is the change of Ethereum's consensus mechanism from proof of work to proof of stake. We will get to the meaning of the name in a minute, but first, what does that mean? So, Ethereum is a decentralized blockchain, which simply means a very large ledger or list of accounts, balances, and transactions. This list is stored on a lot of computers all around the world. There is no central authority to process new transactions and correctly update this list. So, how can the network choose a computer to process new transactions and update the list of accounts and balances? Also, how can we make sure that the chosen computer will not do anything shady like approving fraudulent transactions to get some free coins? Well, we solve these problems using something called a consensus mechanism. In proof of work, which Ethereum currently uses, all the computers on the network are constantly trying to solve a very hard mathematical problem, which is trying to generate a correct hash. So, what does that mean? Well, there is something in cryptography called a hash function. A hash function is like a black box that you give it any data, like a word, and it will give you a hash, which is a series of 64 letters and numbers. The data you can put in is not just words, you can put in a full sentence, a group of transactions, or an entire book, it doesn't matter what you put in, it will give you a hash of 64 letters and numbers. But the thing here is that if you gave it the same data twice, it will give you the same hash, but changing any tiny part in the data you put in will give you a totally different hash. For example, changing just one small letter to a capital one gave us a totally different hash. What happens in Ethereum is that the network may state, for example, that a correct hash needs to start with five zeros. So all the computers on the network will constantly try to generate a hash that starts with five zeros. They do this by taking a group of transactions, which is called a block, adding to it a random number, and then putting all of this into the hash function to generate a hash. As you can see, the generated hash doesn't start with any zeros, so the computer will change the random number and try again, and it will keep trying as many times as it takes to get a correct hash. This is known as mining, and all the computers on the Ethereum network are currently doing this trying to get a correct hash. The first computer that successfully generates a correct hash is chosen by the network to add its block of transactions to the blockchain. The other computers will just check the block to make sure that the transactions are valid, and then the block is added to the blockchain and the computer that got the hash is rewarded with new Ethereum coins. So that is how Ethereum currently works using proof of work. But the problem here with proof of work is that the computers and mining devices consume a lot of electricity trying to find these correct hashes. Some estimates compare the electricity used by Ethereum to the Netherlands, which is a lot of electricity. So that is one of the main reasons Ethereum is switching to proof of stake which theoretically should reduce the energy usage of Ethereum by 99.95%. In proof of stake, there is no mining, so no energy is wasted trying to get correct hashes. The computers who can verify new transactions in proof of stake are not called miners, they are called validators. In proof of stake, for a computer to be a validator on the Ethereum network, it needs to lock up a large amount of tokens as a collateral, which will equal 32 Ethereum. This locking up of tokens is called staking, and it is done to make sure that the validator will work correctly and will not try to approve fraudulent transactions. It is kinda like the collateral you offer the bank before taking a loan. So after the merge, what will happen is that for each new block of transactions that needs to be processed, the network will randomly choose a validator to process these transactions. The other validators will check the block and then vote on it if everything is okay and the block is accepted, 
the validator is rewarded with Ethereum coins, and also, the other validators that voted on the block will get a small amount of Ethereum. But if the block has invalid transactions approved, then, the validator will lose some or all of its staked Ethereum coins. This is known as slashing. On the other hand, the other validators that checked the block and found the invalid transactions will get rewarded with Ethereum coins. We will actually make a new detailed video on how Ethereum will work after the merge, and we will release it very soon, but for now, that is the general overview. Let's now get back to the meaning of the merge name. So, there is a proof-of-stake blockchain that was created by the Ethereum team in 2020 and still running till today. This blockchain is called the Beacon Chain and it was created as a first step for switching Ethereum from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. This blockchain is currently running separate from the main Ethereum network, and it is like an empty blockchain, it doesn't have any real users' transactions. But it currently has around 400,000 validators and 13 million Ethereum coins staked by these validators. So this beacon chain is now fully ready to be used, as it was extensively tested during the past two years, without affecting the main Ethereum network. So, remember when we said that the Ethereum blockchain has a very large list or database of accounts, balances, and transactions? Well, this database is called the state. So in the merge, we will remove proof of work from the main Ethereum blockchain and take the current blockchain state and merge it with the proof of stake beacon chain. And that is where the merge name comes from. After the merge, no history will be lost, all accounts, balances, and transactions since 2015 will be available as they were before the merge. But the new blocks of transactions will be added by the beacon chain validators using the proof of stake mechanism we explained earlier. If you still did not fully understand it, here is a very simple analogy. Imagine Ethereum as a plane flying in the air. The engine the plane is currently using is taking a lot of fuel, so the remaining fuel will not be enough to reach the destination. So we're trying to swap the current engine with another, much efficient one. But we are trying to do that in the air without stopping the plane or landing down. In this analogy, the old engine is the proof of work and the new efficient one is the proof of stake. And as you may be thinking, it is a very hard and risky thing to do, which is the case also with the merge. Actually, it is the hardest upgrade the Ethereum developers has to do. But they had successfully done it on three Ethereum testnets, Gorley, Robston, and Sepolia. A testnet is like a clone of the Ethereum network that allows developers to test stuff without impacting the main Ethereum network. So with these three successful test net merges, it looks like the developers will successfully complete the main net merge when it happens on September 15th. Keep in mind that this date may change. Now, let's see the impacts of the merge. Let's start with the impact on normal users. First of all, there is no Ethereum 2.0 coin. The Ethereum coin will be the same after the merge. So, don't fall victim for scammers asking you to convert or upgrade your Ethereum coins. Also, don't give your private keys to anyone or send coins anywhere, as scammers will try to take advantage of users during the merge. So, again, you don't need to do anything at all during the merge. You probably will not even notice the transition, as the network will not stop. Also, after the merge, apps like Uniswap and Aave and others should work normally like they were before the merge. For example, if you have deposited some tokens on Uniswap, after the merge, you will have the same number of tokens deposited on Uniswap. When it comes to the speed of the transactions, you probably also won't notice any difference. It may be slightly faster, but most users will not notice any speed difference. Let's now talk about the impact on the tokenomics and price. So currently, the total circulating supply of Ethereum is around 120 million coins. And currently before the merge, new Ethereum coins are created from two sources, the main Ethereum network which currently uses proof of work, and the beacon chain which uses proof of stake. On the main network, around 4,930,000 new Ethereum coins are created every year and given to the miners. On the beacon chain, around 584,000 new Ethereum coins are created every year and given to the validators who add valid blocks to the beacon chain. So, as you can see, the total number of new Ethereum coins created every year is around 5,514,000. This makes the current inflation rate around 4.5%, which means that each year, the supply of Ethereum increased by around 4.5%. But after the merge, there will be no mining and no mining rewards. So only 584,000 new Ethereum coins 
will be created on the beacon chain. This will bring the inflation rate down from 4.5% to only 0.48%. A very interesting point here is that a part of the gas fees paid by Ethereum users is burned, which means it is destroyed and removed from the circulating supply. So, it is estimated that on average, around 400,000 Ethereum coins are burned per year. And this number will increase as more people are using the Ethereum network, because that means more gas fees are paid and more Ethereum coins are burned. So, when the usage of Ethereum increases after the merge and the number of burned Ethereum coins is larger than the number of new Ethereum coins created, then Ethereum will become deflationary, which means that the supply of Ethereum will decrease over time. And according to the simple law of supply and demand, this should make Ethereum more valuable, which theoretically means that the price may increase, at least on the long term. We will leave a link for the Ultrasound Money website in the description, you can see there all the detailed numbers and predictions. But now, let's see the impact of the merge on the gas fees. A very common myth many people believe is that the merge will reduce the gas fees on Ethereum. Unfortunately, this is not true at all, the gas fees will stay the same after the merge. That is because a block on the Ethereum blockchain has a limited number of transactions in it, the merge doesn't change the size of the block. So, when a lot of people are using Ethereum in periods of network congestion, you will always need to pay more to include your transactions in the next blocks. But a good thing is that the merge is a first necessary step in the roadmap to scaling Ethereum, as it will enable us to make more space for storing the data of the rollups, which should eventually make transaction fees much cheaper than what it is right now. If you don't know what a rollup is, watch our video on rollups, you will understand it perfectly, we won't get into them in this video, as they can get pretty complicated. Also, we have an amazing video on the Ethereum gas fees, you can watch it if you want to understand why they get so high at the first place. So, what will happen to the miners after the merge? That is a question many people have. Well, like what we said, no mining is possible after the merge. So some big mining companies will try and look for other blockchain to mine on, like Ethereum Classic for example. This is because they have a lot of mining hardware worth billions of dollars, so they can't let them just sit there and do nothing. Some smaller companies will go out of business and sell their hardware. Some individuals will also stop mining and others will search for other cryptos to mine. But some miners claimed that they will create a proof-of-work fork of the Ethereum blockchain. That basically means that they will clone the Ethereum blockchain with all the accounts, balances, and transactions and they will continue mining blocks on it. So, they will run it using proof of work, like before the merge. If this happens, it will be a separate blockchain from the main Ethereum blockchain after the merge. Some people think that if this happens, Ethereum holders will get free coins on the new proof of work chain. But the largest stable coins and exchanges have already stated their support for the main Ethereum blockchain after the merge, which makes the chances of this fork happening very low, but it is still possible. So we're gonna have to wait and see what will actually happen when the time comes. Before we end the video, let's talk about some risks of the merge. So during the merge, like any technical upgrade, there is a chance that something may go wrong, which can cause the Ethereum blockchain to stop for a while. But the chances of this happening are pretty low. Another risk that comes with the merge is the censorship risk. After the merge, some big exchanges and companies like Coinbase, Kraken, and Lido will be running validators to process transactions and earn interest for their users. And last month, the Treasury Department in the United States prohibited the citizens of the United States from using the Tornado Cash app. So, a validator run by a big exchange or company may choose to avoid processing a transaction interacting with this app, to comply with the government, and to avoid violating any sanctions. This idea of censoring specific transactions is clearly against the decentralization basis of cryptocurrencies and DeFi. But the Ethereum team is currently researching some possible solutions for this problem. But that can be a topic for another video. At the end of this video, we really hope you learned what you need to know about the Ethereum merge. And if you liked our video, hit the like button, let us know in the comments if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.